Shabbat Shalom, Parashat Vayechi, the last portion of the book of Genesis. We finished the book. Personal insight. I had my 40th birthday this week. Yes, I was born 40 years ago. Fun fact, I was raised in Netanya, not in Samaria, in a small neighborhood that's called Kiryat Nordo. If you heard of Max Nordo, he was the second in command after Herzl. He was helping him all through the way with all the Zionist movement in the early 19th century and furthermore. There's a story that connects the dots between this week portion, Vayechi, which is my bar mitzvah portion, and Nordo. It's such a strong story that I might have tears in my eyes while telling it, but it's okay. I think this story tells you a lot. <sighs> On the second night of the First World Congress, Zionist Congress, in 1892 in Basel, Max Nordo gave an emotional speech in German. He was a very secular Jew. He was not involved in Judaism whatsoever, to be honest. Very smart guy, a doctor, a philosopher, an author. People were surprised that in the middle of the speech, he kept on saying three words over and over again. Quoted from Jeremiah 31, 15, 16, 17. There's a conversation there with Rachel that God says to her, stop from crying. They shall return. Talking about their son. The sons of Rachel, the people of Israel shall return. In Hebrew, Veshavu banim legvulan. They will return. He says this in Hebrew a couple of times. And people are like surprised. Dr. Nordo, you are like not the type to quote biblical text in Hebrew. And he was asked, Where did you brought it, doctor? He said, Because of these words, I am standing here today in the Zionist Congress. And that's the story. He was a doctor and he had a small clinic in Paris when he accepted people. One night, a knock on the door, an old Jewish lady carrying her son, nine, ten, looks very sick, very ill, he puts him into the room. The kid is almost dying. He has no power, no energy. He's pale, he's white. And the mother screams, oh, my son, my son, my son. She doesn't speak French, obviously. So she says in Yiddish. When he pounds at them and asks them to fill some information, he understands none of them know French. And he loses it. Dr. Nardo begins to shout at them and say, you had an opportunity. You came to Paris. Ditch this nonsense of Yiddish. This, this, you got an opportunity to be in the most cultural city in the world. Learn the language. Be part of the society. And they tell him that he's been sick for a couple of weeks. And the father learns Torah, learns Judaism, and he learns Judaism all day. And they didn't have the time to come to the doctor. And he's so upset. What are you doing? It's nonsense. And as he screams at them, he sees the kid just losing it. He's pale. He's like fading. So he wants to talk and he wants to ask him, so what do you learn there in this place where they learn Torah all day? When he asks this question, immediately the kid stands up. Some color comes back to his face and he says, yes, we're learning about this week is, is the portion of Vayechi, the portion we are reading about. And he quotes a commentary from Rashi, again Rashi, it's always going to be Rashi. And he quotes a commentary that's based on a three words that 
the verse says, and I remember because it's my bar mitzvah, it's the verse that says, V'ani b'boi mipadan meta alai Rachel, in English. When Jacob asks Joseph to go and bury him in the land of Israel, he says to him, but I, when I was walking, Rachel, your mother, died. And I didn't bury her in Bethlehem. I buried her on the spot, on the way. Rashi explains as follows, and I'm going to quote from inside, 28.7. When I was returning from Padan, Rachel died to my sorrow while I was journeying in the land of Canaan when still some distance short of Ephrat. And I buried her on the road and I buried her here and there and did not carry her even the short distance to Bethlehem to bring her into the city. That's the quote of Rashi. And that's what Jacob says to Joseph. I know Jacob says to Yosef that in your heart you feel some resentment against me. I'm asking you to go and bury me in Israel from Egypt and I didn't take a couple of mice to bury her inside the city. Know, however, that I buried her there by the command of God. And the future proves that God has commanded him to do this in order that it might help her children when Nebuzaradan would take them into captivity. For when they're passing along the road, the road, Rachel's come forth from her graves and stood by her tomb weeping. Mercy for them. As it said in Jeremiah, a voice is heard in Ramah. The sounds of weeping, Rachel weeping for her children. And the Holy One blessed he replied to her, there is a reward for the work, says the Lord, for the children will return to their own border. They will return. That's what the sick kids says to Nordo. Nordo says that when he heard this, he moved away for the child and his mother not to see him weeping. He said to himself, Nordo, you're a smart person. You're a doctor. You know so much. This nine years old kid just taught you something that you didn't know. A young child is being educated thousands of years after this incident with one realization, they will return. Nordo said, at that moment I realized I didn't feel part of this nation, but a nation that educates the kids that one day they will return to the nation. A nation that talks about Joseph, Jeremiah, Rachel, like it happened yesterday. I want to be part of this nation. This is a nation of victory. I said to myself in my heart, Noro says, this is a nation that I want to be part of. This is a nation that's going to live here for eternity. And I decided I want to be part of this eternity. I want to be part of this movement. I want to be part of this culture. Naruto finishes that the next day as he's just drinking his espresso in the coffee shops of Paris, he opens the newspaper and he sees an ad. A person that the future of the Jewish people is important for him, who cares about anti-Semitism, who is looking for a solution, please call me. Let's talk. Sign Dr. Theodore Erzo. I dropped my practice. I dropped being a doctor and I committed myself to Herzl and the Zionist movement. In 1892, Max Nordo joins the Jewish people, returns to it, becomes a huge crucial member of the Zionist movement and the rest of the story that neighbors, neighborhoods in Israel are being called over him 
Nardo. And that's the story of the neighborhood I came from. And that's the story of our nation. In this weekly portion, three words, they will return. It's closing up the story of Genesis. The Bereshit, we talked about how God promised the land to his people all the way to the understanding that in the end there's going to be exile, but they will return. Surely we have returned. Our nation, our land, our people. There is war. Bad things are happening around us, but we know that a nation that calls the name of Jacob, of Rachel, of Jeremiah, will be here forevermore. Shabbat shalom and happy birthday.